Hello and welcome to IndianExpress.com. On Monday, 25 CRPF men were gunned down by Naxalites in Chhattisgarh. That was the second big attack on CRPF in the last 40 days. Suddenly we see Naxalism is back in limelight. We have Diptiman with us to discuss the uh, latest attack. Diptiman, what is going wrong with the fight against Maoists in Chhattisgarh? Uh, you see, uh, this is in 40 days, we've lost 38 soldiers. This is one of the biggest attacks after uh, the 2010 Chiltan Nar massacre when 76 CRPF men were killed. See, we need to understand what is happening here is this was, uh, uh, both the attacks were in similar circumstances where a CRPF party giving protection to a road came under uh, attack from Maoists who had set up an ambush. Now, why is this happening? Now, road protection is always fraught with danger because there is a specific spot where you have to reach every day and there is unavoidable predictability to such movement. As it is said in Chhattisgarh, the moment you are predictable, that is the moment you write your obituary. So because uh, now the problem here is that the road construction in Chhattisgarh is very slow. It takes 15 to 20 days to build one kilometer of road, which means for those 20 days, the CRPF men from their camp to the road, every day they have to reach there. Even if the SOP says that you have to change your route and you have to take different times, the point is that you're two kilometers away in your camp, and in this two kilometer stretch, how many routes can you change and how many times can you uh, uh, change your schedule? If somebody is smart enough, somebody will wait you out and lay an ambush. And the area is such that there is thick foliage, there are thick jungles, somebody sitting 25 feet away is not visible to you. So you cannot always know if there is an ambush and it is practically impossible to sanitize the area every day. So the risk is always there. The risk is always there and the solution to this is you need to build your roads faster. You need to get technology so that roads are built in two days. One kilometer road is built in two days. So if the Jawan is going there for just two days, the idea of predictability goes down very, very fast. You are talking about 85% reduction of time, which means as much probability of him being killed goes down. Right. So a lot is being made about, you know, the, there being no CRPF DG for the last two months. Do you think, I mean, a vacancy at the top really uh, results in no, it affects the morale of the personnel in the way it is being talked about now? Uh, see, uh, if a force does not have a DG for a long time, it would impact uh, both the morale of the force and the way the force operates per se, because there is no top man taking decisions for the entire force. But I don't think in the short run it has such a big uh, impact, because there are set structures, uh, uh, there are different levels of command in the force which function with or without the DG being there. In any case, the DG is not micromanaging everything. The commandant takes a decision, the I, there is an IG in that region who is taking decisions. So decisions are being taken. As we know that the government has uh, today itself uh, appointed a new DG, R.L. Bhatnagar, uh, for the CRPF. Uh, but yes, uh, it would have been nice if the government had, uh, in the very beginning, uh, re after um, K. Durga Prasad retired, uh, within a week if uh, a DG would have been appointed, it would have been nice. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it has any major operational impact on the force. So after the attack now we have we have started hearing the familiar noises that, that come uh, after every such attack, you know, a review of this strategy, more meetings, uh, you know, change in plan and those kind of things. What exactly do you think, I mean, what is the way forward? If, if there is a review in strategy, what exactly does that mean? Yeah. As you rightly said, more meetings. Uh, I don't think more meetings are going to sort this problem out. Uh, see, what, what we need to understand that it's not just the central government's responsibility to fight the Maoists, and this is something that the state governments need to understand. If we look at the history of Maoist violence and wherever it has been defeated, it has always been because of the state police taking the charge in leading from the front. Okay. Be it Andhra Pradesh, be it West Bengal, there have been very strong chief ministers who have taken very strong positions. They have Andhra built the Greyhounds, which are primarily responsible for driving Maoists out. Similarly, 
uh, in West Bengal, Mamta Banerjee made sure that Mavis are out. And and now we hardly hear of any attacks in, in West Bengal. So the state government has to take a stand. The state government has to put its forces ahead because they are the ones who know the terrain. They are the ones who are going to be there all the time. And it's the state government which is going to carry out the development. Right. Unless development reaches those places, unless the presence of state is felt, why will people stand with the state? They will continue to stand with the Maoists. One of the reasons that we are using battles in the Maoist uh, core zone is because the people, the tribal people of those areas are not with us. They are with the Maoists. And why are they with the Maoists? Because we are not able to reach to them. The administration is not there. There is no hospital, there is no school. Nothing is functioning. Obviously, Maoists will put roadblocks into building that. But we have to make sure that we do it fast. Until that happens, we will keep using these battles. So we still have to see whether this particular attack forces any change in the business as usual scenario. Uh, thanks, Deepthiman. Thank you for watching. Keep watching IndianExpress.com.